Hi everyone, uh, I'm here today with Ahmed. We're gonna talk about industry academic partnership to train the next generation of game user researcher. This is based on a project that we are currently working together. Uh, and it's kind of initiated by the, uh, by the hope that we always discuss uh, within the community to have a more inclusive uh, you know, industry. And you know, to be honest, games user research is actually doing quite good as a community. We have the mentorship program, we have all these talks are accessible, we have the library of loads of talks uh, on, on YouTube that everyone can see, but we always can do better. And uh, what we are trying to do here is through uh, training. Uh, so we found that uh, training is, you know, Training is super important and uh, allowing people, especially those that may not necessarily have access to training resources, um, you know, uh, it's, you know, there, there's a discrepancy there in terms of who is able to get opportunities. And, you know, it was a topic that came up as well, uh, you know, in the uh, GDC, you know, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, in GDC, it, it came up as well there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an important topic to address. And this was something that Pejman spoke about last year in his previous uh, yeah. summit talk. Yeah, and one particular other thing was uh, how competitive the industry is now these days. So, uh, you know, it kind of require uh, people who want to get into that industry to compete, be more equipped. And that, as we saw in the uh, roundtable discussion, discussion at GDC and the tweet that was yeah. uh, shared from there, that often ac having access to that training, uh, being able to build a portfolio mm -hmm. while also probably having another job uh, and maybe looking after kids or something, that's not always easy. And that's what we wanted to focus. And in an interesting way, I think uh, we started discussing this uh, after the presentation I gave last year at the Games User Research Summit. Uh, if, if, if you remember, we talked about uh, how academic industry partnership may uh, you know, have a positive impact for our industry together. Uh, and uh, I guess today we're gonna share uh, you know, the project we are working on and uh, some of the learnings from that, uh, that, that, that the, 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 the partnership we had. Yep, and you know, we've been talking to each other for years now, and uh, there were some interns as well that who uh, were part of Pejman's program, who he uh, taught, who are now uh, you know, employed at Ubisoft, and we kind of thought, you know, hey, you know, we've been talking about academic industry partnerships. You spoke you know, really well about you know, this topic and how important it is. Um, so well, what can we do there and you know, uh, so let's go back a bit. Maybe let's do a quick introduction on who we are. Uh, so my name is Pejman. I am an associate professor at Ontario Tech University. Uh, I lead the UXR lab, which we basically take projects from both academic research and industry project. I've been involved with the GER field uh, since 2009 when I started my PhD uh, at Sussex University. And at the same time, I worked at Vertical Slice and then later on at Player Research uh, before I moved to Canada to uh, start my, uh, my university position. Uh, I always uh, had this interest to kind of do both, uh, kind of be involved in both environments, both on the academ academic side and the, and the industry side. Particularly in 2015, I took a couple of I think it was a year off from my university uh, work, to, work uh, to, to be part of Execution Lab and run their user research team there. Uh, and uh, yeah, some people may remember me or know my name from the Games User Research book that we co-edited uh, back in 2018. Hi everyone, my name is Ahmed Gnaim and I'm the Associate Director of User Research at uh, Ubisoft uh, Toronto. I've been at Ubisoft for getting close to 10 years, uh, gone through a bunch of different roles within user research and now obviously managing you know, a fairly large user research team that's responsible for supporting our local projects uh, here in Toronto. And, uh, you know, part of that focus has always been, you know, sourcing and uh, looking for uh, talent uh, in Toronto, those that are, um, uh, you know, as a, as a challenge, those that are uh, both interested in video games and understanding of user research or research uh, practices in general, uh, who have you know who have, are interested in looking at player psychology? It's not an easy thing to find, and it's been a bit of a challenge for us. So, you know, uh, putting these thing, two things together and yeah, addressing our you know our backgrounds is kind of an important area in terms of leveraging what experience we have yeah. to and kind of address the need there. One thing I remember, I think first we met in I think it was two thousand fifteen. Uh, uh, yeah. So yeah, we've been kind of talking to each other, knowing each other for the last like six years before we get to. And we always wanted to work together, but finally this opportunity
came across, and I'm glad that we, are, yeah. we did this. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk to you in detail about how our partnership, and we've broken that down into going over a little bit, you know, the goal, context, and challenges so you understand where we're coming from. Then we're going to go into detail in terms of what we've built together in, as a case study, and then we'll talk about lessons learned, uh, really focusing on just, you know, some of the benefits uh, um, and, you know, what it, and how you can get involved in what, uh, what it can provide. Yeah, I want to go back to kind of the initial vision uh, that we all share, that to have a more inclusive industry and kind of maybe breaking, down, breaking it down a little bit and what, the, what does that mean, uh, which uh, kind of uh, starts, I guess, with in recruitment and hiring practices, in, in promotion practices, uh, but I guess these are all impacted uh, by how we do better gear training uh, at the first place so that, uh, you know, when uh, we have candidates come to the hiring or promotion, uh, they have a competitive profile uh, to work in, in such a competitive industry, I guess. Uh, I wonder how many, like, you get many applicants usually, and I think selecting them and identifying them is often a... It is uh, a challenge. Challenge. <laughs> it task. is a challenge for sure. Yeah, so I guess the key thing we want to focus today is on what does that better training or better gear training mean and how our partnership uh, try to address, uh, ad address this. So what would better gear training look like? Well, um, an important part of it is when we think through it, uh, we think through what are the skills that you would need in your first job in games user research, you know, how to get into the industry. Uh, so we wanted to first identify those skills and what those would be. Uh, then we wanted to take those skills and structure it, provide a framework or at least a plan to learn those skills, something where we could also reproduce it because you know, we're both very, very busy people. Um, so we wanted to be able to reproduce it across different groups as well. And then um, also have that material that's, you know, it's curated. It's curated by us. It's curated by also others that supported us as well in terms of, you know, hard and soft skills training that would be needed to build yeah. a well-rounded user researcher. Yeah. And then there's also, you know, providing access to resources. You know, this is not something that's necessarily uh, common or maybe resources that are not always well used. So like even just like lab space uh, as part of some of the uh, tasks that they would be able to perform. And on the note of tasks, you know, we want to make sure that those tasks, they're, they're meaningful and that they're able to kind of learn in a safe environment that they can make mistakes and really that they're also receiving some actionable feedback from you know, us as mentors, something that they're able to learn from, and again, in a safe way, and they can kind of iterate and understand the different layers of analysis. And it's also really important that uh, they also have some financial stability while they're learning, because I think we all yeah. know that you, know, you may want to learn these things, but you may not necessarily have the time or the ability to do so because you need to, you know, to yeah. work elsewhere or something like that. So allowing them to focus on just learning Giger foundations was important. Exactly. Yeah. The thing is, this better training is not actually that easy to achieve. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the challenges that they, we feel that uh, students or research graduates may have when trying to get these needed, uh, needed training. So if you look at the universities, uh, I guess most training and courses are often uh, maybe only topic only cover general research topic without getting a specific into game or games user research. Uh, and when it comes to assignments and tasks, uh, they, they are obviously related to the learning material and learning goals or learning outcomes, but they miss uh, the connection uh, with the industry needs and industry practices. Uh, again, instructors may, might be uh, are often experts in, in their particular topic, but they may lack industry knowledge or industry practices to provide those actionable feedback to help students uh, in you know, being able to build that competitive profile for industry job. At Ubisoft, this was something that I, I noticed and uh, I believe this is something that others will notice too on the industry side that you know, when it comes to uh, hiring and training, you know, there's a big commitment that goes into it, right? It's expensive, it's time intensive, you're also taking a risk on a person, we want to be able to make that as risk, risk free as you can, and obviously that's not uh, feasible. Um, so, you know, that is a challenge and we wanted to be able to kind of address that need. And there's also, you know, there may also be less opportunities to practice and to focus just on those foundations because at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, we have a position open because, you know, we're trying to fill an opening or to backfill a position, you know, people move around, right? And at the same time, we also have very 
um, tight production deadlines and we want to be able to have impact as user researchers, so it may add additional pressure and therefore cause less opportunity. And uh, we also recognize that you know, some studios may not have dedicated user research teams or may not have uh, mentors necessarily, and you know, it's fairly common in the industry hearing about people who get into games user research, but you know, you know, they're on their own and therefore having structured training may not, is, may not be uh, common. Uh, it's just uh, you know yeah. something that's you know we've all heard so much about. Yeah. So we also want to spend a bit of time on discussing uh, where each party can contribute towards providing that better gear training. Uh, I mean, at the university side, one obvious way is to include uh, a specific user research, game user research training as part of the uh, you know as part of the degrees as part of the program. Uh, you know, open up maybe some of the facilities, uh, equipments that we have uh, to for people to for students to be able to practice, uh, use them to do uh, you know tasks that may be even outside their their core uh, program. Uh, also, universities are known for uh, being a low risk and safe environment uh, in terms of uh, practicing new skills, making mistakes, and learn from them uh, and, and improve. Uh, something that, as you just mentioned, is not often possible. Uh, uh, you know, when you get a, get a job at a company. And the other benefit that comes from working with universities is they often have access to many students. So there is often a wide talent pool, uh, eager students that are ready to, uh, to engage in these training opportunities and, uh, and get involved in, uh, in projects. Uh, and finally, I think on the university side, we are, uh, because we always engage with the students in different uh, capacities, we have Kind of streamline these different hiring process rather as a user as a as a research assistant or have them as a as a lab assistant or a summer student. So there are many ways uh, that uh, in universities we can engage with those interested students uh, to to learn about this particular topic. And I definitely and uh, something I found that was very beneficial is just you know that process is streamlined. It's figured out. It's also less of a load and on the industry side when it comes to working with uh, you know me working with you there. Uh, because you had all this figured out, so you know it, it's sometimes hard to be like, okay, where do we hire from? Where can we find people? So it really, it really helped out there, um, just in terms of that contribution. Yeah. And you know, on the industry side as well, um, you know, we were able to provide you know, uh, you know, specific and uh, very specific and practical skill sets based on our needs. You know, we know what we're looking for. We know what would be beneficial to our own projects or as user researchers. So be able to provide that skill set. Um, as well as you know the you know, access to expert mentors, you know both Penjim and I in this instance, you know with the experience that we have, being able to provide uh, guidelines and training to the students, and then also being able to uh, you know provide uh, a real project, uh, a task that is something that could be of benefit where students feel like it's not just work for the sake of it or just for the sake of learning. It's also work that can have an impact on another user research team, which is very different. And you know, there's there's also funding uh, that we uh, can provide, and that funding is a bit more flexible than other sources of funding, uh, as I've understand and come to learn uh, from Pejman there that uh, you know the funding and this kind of sponsorship that we that we're able to to provide there, you know, it's really just around the this is a project that we want to be able to work on together, and this is the amount that we can provide, and pretty much yeah, it's exactly it's yeah, we that. really appreciate that funding <laughs> uh, because you know usually the government based funding they're very restricted to. Yeah. A particular research project and you know loads of restriction on how the money should be spent uh, where you know industry fundings come with loads of flexibility around that and we, we, we like yeah. that okay so let's talk about uh, some detail of our, 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 our partnership our project uh, so yeah the vision uh, as we uh, as we already mentioned is to support interest the students or recent graduate to get into uh, game user research and by support, we basically wanted to provide them access to uh, experts, mm -hmm. uh, ourselves and uh, your team of experts, uh, access to the training resources, equipment, uh, cool projects, real meaningful projects uh, from Ubisoft, and as well as, as, as we talked about, we wanted this experience to be funded so they can focus on this and not worry about uh, you know, finding another job or working part time or in the evening so they can dedicate their time on uh, you know, learning game user research skills and practice that and hopefully make a really, you know, a strong portfolio uh, when looking for their, uh, their job. Uh, we're going to discuss, uh, you know, the format a little bit, uh, as I said, with the hope to, uh, 
you know, that format might be rep replicable for, you know, if, if, if any, any of our uh, basically uh, listeners, uh, you know, want to do similar initiatives. Uh, and we have spent quite a bit of time, uh, Ahmad, to yeah. figure out this format now. A few, we a few weeks <laughs> thinking through how, how would this work? Uh, so we basically ended up uh, creating what we call work unit, uh, which is a 12 weeks engagement, uh, and that aligned with the university semester. Uh, and in each of those units, uh, we wanted basically to have three key parts or bits, like there is a training, there is a work, and then there is a, there is a presentation. Uh, with uh, so we thought yeah we're gonna start with uh, each of the work units we can do like one or two weeks training where students you know get access to those uh, material that we prepared for them a uh, couple of other presentations that we actually recorded yeah. together yeah. and then uh, we had this idea of uh, you know three work sprints uh, each of them would be like around two three weeks uh, where we give a very particular task uh, related to Ubisoft's needs and project yeah. but not something that it's like confidential no, so yeah, exactly. uh, that uh, students could could engage with uh, we met with them many times during these uh, these project sprints and gave them feedback as they move from one project to the next project uh, and then at the end uh, there is a presentation uh, that they are uh, going to deliver to Ubisoft team yeah. uh, I think next week there one other thing we should probably mention is this different level of training so the setup uh, we wanted, as, as we said, to make it flexible, both for on our side and also on the on the on the participant side. Uh, so we uh, like this di diagram can kind of show how this 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 would work in practice. So we have let's say two students starting in fall. Uh, let's call them S1 and S2, and then at the beginning they start at level one. Uh, moving to winter semester, S1. Uh, found the job, so couldn't continue anymore, uh, but we have the flexibility to engage with the new students, let's call them S3, and they start at level one, and S2 is continuing with, uh, with, the, with, the, with our program and moving to level two. Uh, for the summer semester, uh, S3 is moving to, uh, to level two. Uh, our S student number two, which was at level two, basically moves to level three, and we have option to engage with two more students, so S4 and S5 in this case, that they are starting at level one. Let's talk a little bit about learning resources. Yeah, so what did we, you know, what, what, are the, what did we provide, right? So touch on a little bit, right? So, uh, you know, especially when it comes to the initial training phase and those, that week, that two week period that you shared, you know, we, we focused on, you know, the theory, you know, behind, you know, doing an expert evaluation, some of the heuristics, those, you know, that we use in our team here. Um, you know, we focused on how games teach, but also how people learn in video games, which is really important, as well as prof professional de development, and just in terms of like a little bit more on the soft skills side, which is critical to making a well-rounded user researcher. Then there was, you know, taking all that and working on a practical assignment, which would go through the layers of analysis, uh, effectively iterating based off of feedback from both Pejman and I, and then, you know, the final presentation yeah. there. Uh, so let's look at those in more details. Um, so yeah, there's, and going into detail here on the exp expert eval, you know, we, uh, you know, shared some resources there and, you know, uh, some of the, some papers and the theory, you know, we're going into, you know, game flow, playability heuristics, you know, you can see there in the picture, you got the you, tenants and trap cards there. Game user research book. Yeah, the game user research book, <laughs> should I have that? Uh, <laughs> right, so a lot of that, those foundations, uh, they were there and provided the students so they would be able to read about it. Then, you know, a little bit more of a practical presentation uh, by us going into, you know, taking that theory, taking what they've learned. Let's show some examples in practice. So, you know, not that I'm necessarily picking at this game in specific, but, you know, just as an example here, there's, a, you know, there's, there's this person playing this game that we all know, you know, they're in a shootout there, uh, you know, looking at the top of the house. But at the same time, there's a tutorial tip showing up the top left. And that tutorial tip is that telling them to look at the bottom, bottom left in the mini map there where you know, we probably believe that a player is not necessarily going to notice or attend to really what's being described and shown to them there or what they should even learn from it. Uh, so there's that. And then there's, you know, again, the professional, professional development. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of that's soft skill resources here, uh, generously provided by our HR team at Ubisoft, you know, giving us some advice in terms of what are some of the skills that people should learn, especially those that are coming into an entry level role and may, uh, might not necessarily have worked in an office environment either, because that's something that you know, I, I have found personally to be a little bit of a gap sometimes when yeah. we're looking at doing those, when we're doing hiring uh, for more uh, those junior level roles. So, you know, resources include managing stress and man stress management techniques, 
I benefited from this. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, building resilience. Uh, you know how to you know addressing miscommunication. You know how to avoid it. Um, you know handling difficult conversations. Giving and receiving feedback really important. Uh, you know managing interruption. You know procrastination as well. You know these are students who are working on deadlines. Uh, provided by us, you know, they, we were, we're reviewing something, we want them to keep on track with it too, uh, so that's important there. And then, so all of that said, you know, they take what they've learned, take all the soft skills training, uh, take the hard skills training as well, take that, apply it to a competitor analysis, and as Pejma mentioned, you know, something that is risk and leak free, it was something that's easier for us to justify, especially in terms of the contractual agreement between both of us, between our two institutions. And then, you know, it's also something that we wanted to justify as well that would be of relevance either to Ubisoft or even to, you know, my team at, U at Ubisoft too, the user research team. Right. And then all of that then culminates into a final presentation. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And just to conclude our presentation, uh, we wanted to highlight some of the lessons that we learned so far because this is a still an ongoing project. We are kind of right in the middle of it. Uh, but so far, uh, we thought to kind of uh, provide a summary of what we think uh, are benefits of such partnership. Uh, I can start with the academic side. So obviously, the first thing that is really important to us is helping our students find jobs. And this program is enable them to get those really kind of specific and unique skills for them to find a job in the games user research uh, you know, domain. Uh, I also think uh, you know, it's beneficial for all the instructors who are involved with this, uh, both in terms of providing some of the industry practices uh, and perspective uh, for their teaching uh, that they may apply to other courses or for their research, uh, just to see like what are the type of, uh, you know, questions that the industry uh, participants may have, uh, and then maybe provide a lens for their research uh, through those uh, through those involvement. Uh, usually, the research uh, grants that uh, we get from government, uh, as we mentioned, are quite restricted, and we often have less restriction when we are engaging with uh, with in, on, on industry projects. Uh, one thing that uh, was important for me as well that you know we have a really nicely equipped lab at Ontario Tech, uh, but we don't often use them to the full capacity. So this partnership basically allowed us to, uh, you know, use those, uh, you know, nice equipment that we have that are often under underutilized. And on a higher level, uh, I think uh, my university or in just general university love this type of partnership. They, uh, they, they always want to, you know, make their program, make their instructor, uh, make the stuff they do more relevant to the industry. Uh, you know, having uh, students finding job is, is often one of the metrics that our university are, are being uh, evaluated against uh, and uh, kind of diversifying the source of funding they receive like from the government and from the industry is mm -hmm. something that's al often also important for, for universities. And, uh, you know, some of the benefits that uh, can be provided uh, to an industry here from something like this, I found uh, and I very much appreciated was, you know, now we have a direct hiring pipeline, right? That's uh, something that's kind of rare to have, I would say. Um, you know, it started earlier on, but now we've kind of cultivated that relationship through this kind of uh, program here, through this partnership, so that you know, now we have students who can go through it. Uh, they get, they're trained on the foundations of games user research. Uh, these are people who also have received and iterated on feedback from us. Exactly. Which means they've got experience receiving and iterating on feedback, right? Which is, not everyone has that. Uh, and not maybe not necessarily within the context of, of uh, this field. And then they also have presentation practice, right? They're effectively delivering their own you know, top findings to us, and then they're iterating on that feedback, right? And that's some that's, um, directly tangible experience that's yeah. useful. And I think w one quick thing there is you also get to know them uh, yeah. outside that kind of interview process, yeah. like over a course of three months, six months, as, yeah, exactly. as they work closely with, uh, with the potential candidates. In addition to that, um, you know, there's, it also provides additional opportunities for research, right? You know, uh, as a user research team, we have to prioritize often the work that we do, you know, for our local projects. And that's not always going to be, uh, you know, some R&D initiatives. It's not always going to be necessarily looking at competitors. We don't always have the time for it. So, you know, doing this kind of work with students and in this partnership, you know, it's less risky. It's not as confidential. And also students can offer a different perspective too, right? These are people who... They've just learned the theory, and they're asking a lot of questions, and there's benefits to be had from that too. Um, and expanding on that further as well, you know, 
on my end, you know, we're providing uh, training resources, we're providing our practices in terms of how we do things, as well as the underlying theory. And again, questions are being asked, and those questions are useful. It's thinking through, you know, why is it this way? You know, and that's a good question. There are some uh, other lessons that we learned that we, we wanted to share, and those are often uh, related uh, on how to navigate such contracts. So, uh, setting up, you know, these sorts of partnership between these two relatively huge <laughs> institution wasn't something easy. Uh, we, I should say, actually, I like, tried a couple of times to work on similar project, but always it was through the lens of R and D and research, yeah. Yeah. and there were uh, a lot of uh, you know complexity regarding the confidentiality. Can we talk about this? Uh, you know, uh, who gonna owns the IP? Like that, that was uh, something that always the discussion when we are looking at R and D project. But through like a training related partnership, mm -hmm. we were able to navigate. Uh, you know, through some of these complexities, uh, like in terms of publicity, both organizations are quite happy to talk about this. Uh, we also wanted to maybe touch on expectations from uh, both like us and also our organization and how much support they actually provided. Uh, provided us be. Yeah, there was a significant time commitment for both of us there and, you know, being clear about those expectations and how much, you know, time we were able to ded uh, dedicate and also designing in a way so it's flexible was really important. That's kind of like something that we learned from and exactly. I appreciate yeah. it again. Yeah. yeah, and I wanted to highlight that, you know, uh, the colleagues that help us. So yeah. uh, on my side, our partnership teams uh, were very helpful in terms of setting up this, uh, this en engagement, uh, are my colleagues who kind of provided some of the uh, learning resources and some of the videos. And I know on Ubisoft side, yeah. we benefited from uh, HR team, yeah. we benefited from the communication team. Yeah, um, yeah and then even like this, uh, you know, the presentation they made for us, the yeah. recording. And uh, all of that required some kind of balancing in terms of like, what is the need? When will we need it by? What's the commitment? It's important. Yeah. So, what can you do? How can you get involved in something like this? How can you kickstart something like this? You know, if you're in a position, uh, either on the academic side or on the industry side, if you're in a position where you feel like you would be able to uh, do this or you have an interest in doing this, you know, what can you do there, right? So, you know, one of the things that we thought of was, you know, you know we touched on this, you know, research and R&D initiatives, they're not the only path of opportunity. Again, these things, they have a lot of contractual complexities and sometimes just having a partnership and sometimes making that partnership just between two individuals in this instance was a bit, little bit more flexible and framing it as a partnership instead of an R&D initiative uh, was actually really important just exactly. in terms of the approach you wanted to take there. Yeah. Um, and then it was also just making use of internship pathways. You know, on, on Pejman's side, he had a lot of, you know, he had access, he had a process for, you know, allowing students to go to get internships and on our, on our side as well. You know, uh, you know, me uh, worked with you know uh, certain uh, individuals in HR that would that had partnership that had partnerships and they were aware of where we could get students from. So you know, making use of that can really save yeah. you some time. Yeah, one thing I want to highlight there as well is uh, like those internships can also provide some form of indication in which company might be interested in your students. So uh, one of the reason I approached Ahmed for this was because I, I could see that we had number of uh, students who did internship at Ubisoft. Some of them got hired and stayed longer. So it kind of felt that there is a natural connection that we could build this program together. Uh, and I think that uh, you, I don't know, you had the same thought probably yeah. that you hired a bunch of other students and like, okay, maybe let's do more of yeah, this. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So win-win, really. And, uh, Again, and the other thing is that, you know, you're not on your own, right? Uh, on the other side, right, there are, uh, it can be an easy thing to fall into, which is like, I'm just gonna do this thing and how would I do this myself? Uh, try to avoid doing that if you can, ask for help. Uh, you know, on my side and the, on the industry, you know, I approach different teams, you know, approach the HR, approach the communications team, look for the support, looks for the expertise as well. They, they have expertise and I value that expertise, so making use of it is uh, really important. So uh, definitely try to do that too. Yeah, and I think I wanted to kind of highlight that it could be also external expertise. Like, uh, I guess we have done this once, hopefully we're gonna do more of this, but we are also happy to provide, uh, you know, you know, have a, have a chat and, you know, provide, you know, more, 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 more details on what, 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 how we set it up and, uh, and you know, help you in this, uh, in this process, which kind of linked to the our next slide, uh, basically saying that we are happy to answer any questions you may have. 
uh, feel free to reach out. Thank uh, you for listening. Yeah, on Discord, LinkedIn, and yeah, we are excited to to discuss this with you. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>